So I also do um, computer vision image processing. So I've worked before in National Institute of Physics in visual image processing lab as uh, one of its um, uh, researchers. I've also worked with the prior experience before, and right now I'm working with Kabul AI as an AI specialist. So for you, for everyone here, probably you don't um, have an idea of um, computer vision, or some have a slight idea of computer vision. Some of us would think computer vision would be something like this. Hold on. Hold on, they don't have to sound. Let me just check that. Uh -huh. uh, oh, there you go. So some of us would think computer vision would be something like this. Probably a lot of advanced tech will come to your mind. Analysis of some sort, like the A's here. There you go, special recognition right there. Image enhancement. Auto CPU by its base tab. Yeah. Vision. Problem. But if we look at computer vision, most of us will think we'll actually see that something like this. So if you have used um, a filter in Instagram or a filter in Snapchat or a filter in Facebook and TikTok, those filters actually use computer vision. Um, one good example of this is that um, if you're using Zoom or there's the background will be cut off. That's actually image analysis of a background of action. It's actually computer vision. Now, we, we actually have an idea right now of computer vision. It's uh, basically uh, object detection of um, some sort. It's how machines actually see things. It's the basic um, definition of computer vision. Now, we also uh, ask ourselves, with computer vision, mostly we have AI. And mostly, you know, some of us will have some idea of AI. And some of us will think AI will be something like this. Shall I? No. It's my job now. Skynet defense system We're in. now activated. We passed the firewalls, local defense nets, Minutemen, and subs. Skynet fully operational, processing at 60 teraflops a second. Sir, it should take less than a minute to find the virus and kill it. So probably basically have the kind of idea of AI. Pray to God this works. But some would think AI would do something like this. Power failure? No. I don't know what it is. Tony, what the hell is going on? Daddy! Okay, what are you doing here? Thank you. 
he'll be back. We have to shut down Skynet. Where's the system core? Somewhere in this building? Skynet. The virus is infected. Skynet. Skynet is the virus. It's the reason everything's falling apart. Skynet has become self-aware. In one hour, it will initiate a massive nuclear attack on its enemy. What enemy? Us! Well, that's what the others think about AI. But AI right now is something as simple as... Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Oh, Bobby asks... Sure, uh, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. That was a real call you just heard. The amazing thing is the assistant can actually understand the nuances of conversation. We've been working on this technology for many years. It's called Google Duplex. It brings together all our investments over the years in natural language understanding, deep learning, text-to-speech. By the way, when we are done, the assistant can give you a confirmation notification saying your appointment has been taken care of. Let me give you another example. So uh, it can be something like that. Actually, Amazon Psycho and Google Assistant actually work exactly the same as that one. Right now, they're actually experimenting Google Duplex as to how they can integrate that with um, the Google Assistant. And so basically, you cannot talk with your Google Assistant, have it the name is sort, or something like that. You know, it can also be simple as like typing a word in your keyboard, and it can be detected, and it can replace that word. Um, basically, that's just AI. Yeah, it's just uh, how machine thinks. It's how machine do things that our humans are doing but machines does it on their own. So exactly what is what am I talking about? So what artificial intelligence is any task or form by program or a machine that if a human carried out on its own, it would say that a human had, that, had to apply intelligence to accomplish a task. One of those is the analysis of um, objects, identification of objects, persons, identifying a laptop, a chair. For humans, this kind of task is very easy, but for machines, it's really hard because they need to convert that video into an image. Then they need to convert that image into grayscale, they need to convert that grayscale into numbers. And that is hard. Now, this task, this task are trained to create an AI model for the machine. And most of the time, there are only two applications. There are actually three applications. So that's one is um, mentioned by Google CEO. Uh, it's natural language processing. There's text to speech. Um, there's there's also um, audio based AI and also computer vision. So computer vision, on the other hand, is a systematic process as to how machines and systems see things. So it's a, it has an image and turns it into algorithmic data. So for example, a still image, it converts it into a, a visible data that machines can integrate into their system and understand exactly what it does. Now, there are a lot of challenges when it comes to COVID-19 right now. The pandemic spreads like wildfire and we need to stop it, to contain it, and we need to save lives. Um, give you a, a scene of COVID-19, here's a scene from the UK. Oh, 
I have asthma, so it is scary, but we sort of have a duty to our patients, so it's the split between looking out for my own safety, but then also I'm a nurse. But it is scary, like I'd be lying if I say I wasn't scared. We normally wouldn't even consider how much oxygen we can get into the hospital because we know that normally we don't have the number of patients requiring oxygen therapy and it's something that we are worried about that we may unfortunately run out of oxygen supply if we have too many patients needing us. So the situation right now is actually similar, only you pay. It's hard. Just got it. I just wanted to get through it my children. Without this lot, I wouldn't have done it, but so, so good. So given that situation, um, developers, scientists, and engineers in the field of computer vision, computer science, and artificial intelligence have developed many, many ways as to help out in this pandemic. One is, um, example here by Sync, it's um, an AI base. CT scan analysis wherein they analyze the brain, the lungs, CT scan view, and tell them what hap what's happening there. So for example, this, the spots right there are called brown spots. And they're taking consideration in every scan in different stages of those brown spots. So this one is a brown spot between the, maybe it is the lungs, and um, it detects if there's a spreading of the infection if the pneumonia is spreading rapidly because COVID-19 it's not actually the virus that kills you it's the, it's the um, how you the body fights the virus like you will have mass you will have the severe pneumonia you will have a faster heartbeat due to COVID-19 and it's just your body fighting out this virus and it ends up like it's a you being a severe situation and what this, what's, what's the AI system does is it trains the system to detect these brown spots so that uh, doctors won't need to detect them. So training, instead of um, having an expert see your uh, condition, we'll have an AI trained by expert to see your condition and work on your condition and look at your stage. Basically saving manpower, basically saving time because it's faster than humans. And um, this helps out. It's actually been implemented already in the UK. Uh, this other one is um, also uh, based on the lung area. So it's basically, it's um, medical imaging on how to diagnose severe pneumonia as well. So right now we have here um, an X-ray of uh, different images of uh, of the lungs. So one is non-COVID, uh, one is uh, COVID viral, and the other one has a bacterial infection. So we train the data that we have for this kind of conditions. Then we can look at other conditions with the trained data and analyze if they have either non-viral COVID-19, if they have viral COVID-19, or just a normal flu. And this this types of um, analysis make it faster for uh, a hospital or clinic to analyze to to know if the patient have COVID nineteen if the if it's already viral or if it's if it's out of the ordinary they need to treat uh, ASAP. Now, um, there are a lot of challenges, not only on the medical side, there's also on the PPE side, there's also on the um, social distancing side that we're looking at. So, right. so for, for example, there are challenges social distancing where people need to be monitored to social distance if they're, social, if they're proper distance right now. But based on what the OTR is saying, they're actually decreasing the distance, which is weird. But still, we need to actually look at the distance that we have. There's also PPE monitoring, wherein we need, if we're going to establishment, we need to monitor the PPE 
And at the same time, traffic is also important right now because we need to address traffic. These are just some challenges that we have. And right now, we um, in Kamil AI, like an, 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 a, a passionate AI company, we're also building this kind of technologies. So one is that social distancing system that we're actually building. And this, uh, this other one is actually a face mask detection. As you can see, the, the other guy's face is detected if he has a face mask, if he doesn't have a face mask. So these are technologies that we're trying to um, push forward as an advocacy in our company and also as a solution in this pandemic. Uh, we're looking at it as a key goal for us to help out as an AI company to our community. Okay. Um, right now, Kamile uh, AI actually received a grant from um, Australia Aid and also from um, EC when we are part of the uh, Rise Up initiative, wherein we make solutions, innovative solutions for COVID-19. So one of the one of those solutions is the uh, contact tracing app that we are developing right now for offices and um, establishments. We're basically setting up um, different cameras everywhere, and uh, we're actually analyzing those cameras if they're doing social distancing and they're alerting the officials if the area is filled with um, people we need to look at the people if they're wearing masks these are technologies we're actually implementing right now and um, with this grant we're pushing it forward this year so that if the fund if we experience a second wave in the philippines we will be ready so the pandemic caught caught us unaware of the things, caught us by surprise, if you can say. And um, this kind of solutions could prepare us from the worst. Because um, we, I think, uh, basically in one of my opinions is the worst is still there. We haven't finished, we're not finished yet here. And um, we're looking at being prepared and being, um, having these technologies in line so that we could make forward, we could um, move forward despite this pandemic. Okay. So this is how it probably would look like. So if you have example, if you have uh, like uh, a cafe or a convenience store, this is looking at something like this. It tracks down each person's situation and calls them down. So basically, you will be probably asking, what if I don't know how to code? Um, what if I'm not really that aware that much in coding or in AI? I, but I want to help. I want to help when it comes to this kind of technologies. I want to be part of this kind of technologies. Well, probably ask yourself, where do we come in? How do we help? So basically, um, Kabili AI is also introducing image annotation. So image annotation is one way to help us out help everyone out, every AI company out, into developing their own AI system for this kind of technologies. Um, image annotation is uh, one of the most important tasks in computer vision. It's basically how, how computer vision essentially trains their system and gives the machine eyes. So in a way, uh, machine vision, uh, this, this kind of technologies, uh, it, it interprets the world for the for machines. So we humans interpret the world for the machines, for the systems. So there are different ways of image annotation. So one is um, image classification, when we classify one image into a certain object. So for example, this image right here, Right. This image right here is a dog. Right. So this image right here is a cat. So the process of associating an entire image with just one label, that's actually image classification. And with simple examples like this, we are able to annotate if that image has a cat or a dog or any animal. 
So there's this also a uh, uh, method called two D and three D boxing. It's basically a more advanced version of image classification, wherein we draw boxes around an object and identify that object into that object. For example, here, the examples here is um, they're identifying different cars into an image. So yes, this is basically uh, like image specification, but this one use multiple images. This actually identify multiple images, multiple objects in one image. And for example, there are a lot of cars here compared to the one image just identifying to one person or one object. This is one example of how Lion Bridge, um, a research uh, organization uh, in the States are doing it. So they're annotating in different uh, objects or doing something like this. This is, a, this is what they call a semantic segmentation, by the way. And um, they're doing this kind of annotations. So one of, uh, like I mentioned, semantic segmentation also is another way of um, identifying objects by drawing different lines or polygon, polygon type line around the object and identifying it per color. Like for example, right here, the blue item is identified as car. The red ones are identified as person. The traffic lights are identified as traffic lights. So this one's yellow, this one's red, and this one's blue. So basically, it's a, a way of annotating, a much more precise way of annotating objects. Now in Kawin AI, uh, we actually do the same thing. And there are a lot of companies who actually do this as well. Like Tesla is actually using annotation and training their AI model for their self-driving car. Google has always been using AI in a lot of things. And um, actually, it started, it started with CAPTCHA. Now they're actually using image annotation and image training into their um, self-driving car as well. Amazon has been using, also using this in their logistics. TikTok, Snapchat, and Facebook is one of the most famous ones, so actually use this for entertainment. So if you have those filters in your in your messenger, in your in TikTok, if you've been using it, so you've been using AI all along. So it's not that advanced. So yeah, so it's not that hard to understand. All right. There are a lot of um, actual opportunities in data labeling, and it's actually the new workforce right now. It's the new call center. It's the new virtual job. It's the new boom, and it's also one of the funny, um, one of the fun ways, or one of the most, uh, the best ways to be part of the AI industry. It's a billion-dollar market right now, and it's been growing ever since. We're uh, experiencing different AI breakthroughs, and data annotation is actually a boom. And we have different companies who want to implement AI, like Google and Tesla. Now, um, probably ask us, what is that? What the hell is uh, labeled data? What are we talking about? So, in the machine learning, if you have labeled data, that means your mark, your data is marked up or annotated. So it's a target wherein the machine model wants to predict. In general, data labeling can refer to the task included in tagging annotation classification of an object. So, so we have here uh, basic examples of um, different ways of image annotation, which I discussed earlier. And these are like different techniques to annotate the right ways and wrong ways. Or um, this is how a scientist, data scientists, and other developers do data annotation. So you have the data, you internalize the code, and all that, you annotate piece by piece. Now, with the help of
part, it's more of like a not a complicated platform. But we actually have this platform right now. So this is actually the platform that we're actually using for our data annotation and training. So as you can see right here, there are different items, objects for you to use for annotation. And um, this, is, this is actually a platform we use for annotating uh, for traffic. And um, we actually have used this now with our first second batch. So our first batch of um, data labelers actually with partners with the ICT um, basically is a mix of um, teachers, um, single parents, a mix of um, people above their retirement who wants to actually have an extra income, also wants to be part of the AI boom. They got interested not because of the annotation part, they got interested because of the AI skills training part. So, interested in certificate, tsaka sa extra income. So, one, 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 what the, the good thing that we have in this training is that um, we impart our knowledge in AI. Same time we train them to do a data labeling, which right now on our first and second batch, we're deploying them to annotate different um, materials. mentioned by the, uh, in the audience but um me muggers or there are um, female engineers that we have so the team pala from Kawile AI uh, promotes a women in tech kasi yung CEO namin is babae also uh, most of our team babae ako lang actually lalaki wala pa kami <laughs> and um it's actually empowering for women to be part of the tech because uh in the STEM community and for the audience right here that are computer engineers or the choice engineers, uh, pat on the back. I'm really proud of you guys to be part of the STEM community of the engineering community because you guys are awesome. So by the way, if you have some time, you uh, could like our page. So our page is here. So 
the link is uh, underneath here. So ito yung link. Link. So yun. So it's, um, we post up uh, stuff here. We also do announcement for our training. So uh, ngayon, actually, we have our internship program. Wherein we will be, if you don't know Python, so the internship program has an introductory to Python and also introductory to OpenCV and TensorFlow. So if you want to join our internship, you can actually join us. You can DM us on our page. We'll put posting a lot of stuff on our page on our internship. Also, if you want to watch out on the projects that we're doing, so you can also check it out on our page. So, tapos na actually batch two. So this is actually is a post for batch two. Right now, we have another batch with Haysax, with another company, but we're still waiting for the announcement of the date. So we're actually looking at end of September, or early October. So yeah, and uh, I think that's it. Um, thank you so much, guys. Okay, uh, thank you very much, sir, for that talk for our webinar for today. Um, we would now use this opportunity to for a question and answer portion so that if you have any questions or clarifications, you can ask our speaker. We would like to invite you to use our um, chat box to, to, to post your questions to our speaker. And we will entertain you shortly. Thank you. Uh, guys, pala, if you are interested in internship, we're actually looking for interns. So, like I said, if you guys are interested in Python and OpenCV and TensorFlow, ayun, we can take it to guys. So, uh, okay, sir. Uh, we have a question from Ray Mark Egot. Uh, he's asking uh, how to apply for internship for Python. Uh, it's not actually internship for Python. It's internship for Kawin AI. Pero kasi on the internship, you also have um, image annotation, uh, introductory computer vision, and Python. Kasi Python yung platform na ginagamit namin yun eh. So, wait, I'm gonna share you the post pala, guys. So, it's in our page. Ito. Here's me now. There we go. So, ito yung post namin. So, I'm just gonna share the link on the chat box. So, we're looking for college interns. So, more or less, hindi naman siya ganun ka stressful. We actually meet online. We have weekly meetings. Tapos, on those weekly meetings there is one for education that's actually for your training there's one for um, the job which will update us with the task kasi lahat tayo online yun diba so I should understand that you have your own time you also have a lot of activities in Matua because of the modular system that we have implemented so I should understand how you're feeling right now so chillax lang if you apply for the internship we're not pressuring you but anyway, what we want with the internship is actually train you guys and you guys to be part of the AI community then. Ah, it's so Project K1. Uh, no. Okay. Mm, okay. I'll answer, I uh, know. Hi, Billy, guys. APC, I know. I'll answer this question. Pala. So one is from the Project Kawan question. So in projects a Project Kawan po ba may times or schedules pag sa mga. So for the Project Kawan guys, uh, actually tapos na yung batch 2. We're still waiting for the batch 3. Ang um, ginawa you know namin training is a 3 day training. It's 1 hour each day. And um, we're actually planning to just be 1 day. So like a 4 hour training. Uh, hindi naman siya ganun kahirap, it's just data annotation. But there are some tricks. There are some tricks on data annotation. So, chillax lang. Hindi naman siya abot ng 8 a.m. to 5 a.m. For the work part naman sa Project Kawa, 
on it depends on you so the more you annotate the more you earn actually that's what i just told the on the training the more data the more money so yeah the other question naman is um with which are the most powerful ai companies right now well it depends the more data you have the more powerful you are so basically it's just facebook it's google it's one of the most um powerful companies when it comes to data however when it comes to ai there there are a lot of companies like open ai doing ai and um there's also Microsoft is doing AI as well. Any more questions, guys? Okay, guys, uh, do we have any more questions for our question and answer portion? for the internship oh yeah wala naman actually invite yan namin senior high eh, earlier right now we are opening to college kasi nga college season na tapos marami na ginagawa yung mga senior high kaya kami na college <laughs> so yun so there are the requirement one of the requirements is, is you need to speak english at the most and tagalog din so we actually have an intern from us so we di siya marunong mag tagalog di ba so tinuro namin siya mag tagalog <laughs> on the on the fly so those those are one but we're not that strict in the requirements uh actually if you if you know a little of coding that's a plus uh although it is a paid internship i why need a paid internship though it's more of um uh educational but we can give this education also as a little point system for the internship the certificate din pala kami yeah, certificate for internship Thank you, thank you. Uh, okay po, sir. Uh, may nagtatanong po pala, sir. Um, kay Karen Rosel Paelmo. Uh, she's asking if my registration fee po ba yung uh, internship? Uh, wala. Actually, wala naman. Yes, PM on the link. Although we actually we just accept a few, like ten to ten lang yung report sa Ancheri accept. So tay na tay. Wala pa naman ng apply yun. Eh. Kasi kakatapos sa ng batch din namin. So yun. So in batch din namin tatlo lang yun ng apply. Batch one we have seven. So yun. So apply lang kayo. We teach you Python. So may isis pa lang kayo. And if you're looking for computer um, vision as an application, I we're happy to help you out, guys. So yon. So isang link yon, isang plus yon para sa mga likha internship. And that's actually a cool thing because we actually have like for the application part of the internship, we actually have you do a smart short research about computer vision. It's a plus. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, sir, uh, sa internship po ba, so, uh, okay lang po ba kahit wala pa pong like letter from school? Ano? Uh, sa requirement po sa, ano, sa internship, okay ah, lang po ba kahit wala pang uh, letter, wala pang letter from school? Ah, uh, ano, actually, in-invite ko nga yung I-invite ko kayo magpasa sa amin ng people that we could provide. Kasi alam ko may requirement 
gamit kay Dr. Balyado sa EC department, sa EEC department ng Kapsu OJT. So, if, if you if you need some papers for we'll this provide you guys. Um, we can we can provide you guys. Tapos set na lang tayo ng ano, for like number of hours and all that stuff. Tapos kung gusto niya na mag-start sa internship, okay lang kahit wala bang paper, pero for you guys to consider na OJT yon sa school side, sa aming side okay lang. Wala nang problema sa amin. Sa school side medyo uh, gano ba kadami in, in time? Yung medyo may conflict kasi doon eh, yung part na conflict. So, we just give us the requirements, we try to provide so that sa internship side, cool tayo. Alright? Uh, wala ka akong naging pro... Sa Pilipinas kasi okay naman. We consider naman kahit wala pa naman paper, etc. Okay. Any more questions? wala pa wala pa ng schedule like yung nakasimula lang namin eh pero for the work schedule um basically siguro we only require to attend meetings so we have like weekly meetings um feedback lang ganun uh, it's not that strict so mostly we are goals goal based when it comes to internship for example for this week ito yung goal na gagawin mo this is equivalent to number of hours. So yun. I can discuss this in a separate discussion. Um, it's better naman magtanong kayo sa page namin so you can answer out clearly. Tapos, sign up kayo doon. So that we can set up meetings with you guys. Uh, mapuwan naman tayo, di ba? Short, short na intro lang. Hindi mm, ako maano sa time kasi ako yung nag-facilitate na internship. <laughs> so what's really bang ko? Oh, ni papa si Tito internship. So I'm not that uh, keen when it comes to time. I'm more keen when it comes to goals and tasks. Okay, this Gian Magnay. Categories like this: grocery receipts, entertainment shops. Yes. Ah, uh, hi, Gian. Hello. So, yes, I am mag identify ng AI. Actually, kaya to kung ma identify mo yung QR code. So, this falls down to computer vision. So, basically, open the AI naman to. So, you can use the QR code or the barcode to identify the object and check its credentials. Pwede mo kung kasi mayroong unique ID number yun. That is, you can identify. And it would be an unique ID number. Uh, Nakaset na dun kung yung value nun and so on. So from there on, you can get na. Tapos, if you want to identify the pricing and the uh, amount, you can set naman, for example, if you, uh, if you train that data, if you train that data, that for example, that word price into your system, Ma-analyze niyo then we can analyze that, that other part of the image at the right, at the right or the left side. Tapos ma-analyze yung number yun, you can actually have an output of a number itself. Medyo mahirap siya in a way ikwento, pero you need some training for your data here. But if you want to analyze just the barcodes, it's easy enough kasi meron available libraries for barcodes. It's open CV. Although, Suggestion ko, you use a better camera and a good setup for this. So most of the time, I think you guys are using Raspberry Pi for your development, for your, for your PCs. So maganda, focus kayo sa camera nyo, sa setup ng camera nyo, and the lighting itself. Um, receipts are black and white, so it's not that hard to analyze compared to colored images, like image persons or objects. So it's very easy to analyze. Wala problem. All right. Uh, is there any questions? Okay, guys, mayroon pang mga questions? Do you have any questions? Going once, going twice. I think that's it.
Um, thank you, Mr. Uh, Simon Nobanta, for that wonderful um, uh, talk. Um, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, uh, so uh, after this Q&A, uh, we would like to uh, congratulate you for, uh, we, have, we want to thank you for um, um, being our research speaker for, for, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so on behalf of DPCS, we want to present to you the certificate of recognition uh, for being our key speaker for the webinar entitled Artificial Intelligence in the New Normal. Um, uh, certificate is proudly awarded by Junior Hilton Site Point here on this day, September 7, 2020. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, okay, yeah. so. Yeah. Thank you, man. Okay, so after yes, and guys, thank you for uh for our guests and our uh, attendees for this webinar. We thank you for uh, attending this uh, event, and we hope to see you on our our next event. Okay, and that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, sir.